Hey guys, and welcome back to the Female Fitness Podcast. I'm your host, Danny, and today I have decided to do another solo podcast. Now, the the thing that spurred this podcast on, and you'll have seen the title of the podcast is What Even Is Fitness? is that as some of you may have noticed, my training has changed quite a lot over the last few months. And I have been sharing bits of that on social media. And I've had quite a lot of actually, quite a lot of interest in that. And people have messaged me saying it's quite refreshing to see that I'm doing a different style of training. People have enjoyed watching it. And it sort of just got me thinking in my head. And I thought, do you know what? Like, it would be a really interesting thing to talk about on the podcast. Like, the subject of what fitness is and maybe how it's not necessarily something which is fixed for you throughout your entire life, but it is something that may well change. And there are many different forms of fitness. And what is fitness to some to one person might be completely different to the definition of fitness to another person in regards to like the protocols they follow and their lifestyle, what form of training they do, and everything like that. So I thought I'd just share a little bit about how my protocols, my training has changed over the last few months and a little bit about um, why it's really important to have an open mind when it comes to training, nutrition, the protocols that you follow and um, what you sort of like attach yourself to and what you view as your your identity to some extent because I think it's it's a big problem actually in the fitness industry when people they see their identity as either a, a style of training or a sport for example competing they see themselves as a competitor as opposed to a person who does compete and that is a part of their life and there's a difference to when someone sees something as a part of their life in comparison to when see, someone sees something as their identity and it's when they see something as their identity that that often becomes a little bit of an issue at some point so first of all i think it's really easy to get stuck into thinking that a certain sport or a certain style of training is the definition of fitness or is your identity when in reality fitness comes in a lot of shapes and sizes and as an example of this when you are in the bodybuilding industry you might follow a lot of competitors on social media you might go to a bodybuilding gym and therefore it might seem to you like everybody's definition of sort of fitness and everybody's form of training is a bodybuilding style of training and that's the oh you might think that's the only way to sort of progress towards your goals when in reality there are many different forms of training and there are many different sports that we can compete in and bodybuilding is actually a very small part of the fitness industry it can just seem like a very large <laughs> it can seem like a very large part of the fitness industry and it can almost seem seem like your entire world when you are wrapped up in it and sometimes it's really beneficial to actually take a step back and make yourself realize that there is more to nutrition training health fitness than the bodybuilding side of the fitness industry and that doesn't just apply to bodybuilding, that applies to any other sport. So if you're a powerlifter, for example, you might seem, you might think that um, there are a lot of powerlifters in the world and that powerlifting is almost the only way to train, when in reality, there are a lot of other ways to train and you might enjoy a different style of training, either now or at another point in your, in your journey. Um, so your style of training should not be your identity and it really does pay off to have an open mind. 
what fitness is to you might change as you go through different phases of your life and that is absolutely okay and what fitness is to you and the style of training you follow and the the nutritional protocols that you follow should change over time they should change as your values change as your goals change as your lifestyles as, as your lifestyle changes because as these things change, for example, as your values change, then it's going to be appropriate to switch your goals. And I've spoken about this previously, how if, for example, you value health and your fitness levels above your body composition, so above aesthetics, then bodybuilding might not be the right sport for you to pursue at this moment in time. That doesn't mean that it won't be forever. But at this moment in time, whilst your values are health, fitness, above aesthetics, then it's not the most appropriate time for you to pursue a bodybuilding goal. And that's where I'm at in my life right now. You know, I, I absolutely loved every minute of my time competing in bodybuilding. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely loved it. And at the time, it was in line with my values. I valued stepping on stage. I valued bringing the best version of myself to the stage and therefore training in an optimal way from a hypertrophy perspective so that I could develop my physique in line with the bikini criteria and be the most competitive version of myself. So during that period of time, it was appropriate for me to follow an optimal style of training for the goal of hypertrophy, um, apply progressive overload and be very structured with that training. Now I have transitioned away from that goal and I now value health, my happiness, my fitness levels. Um, I also see training as a form of being social as well. It's, it's actually been more appropriate for me to have a little bit less structure and enjoy a style of training which um, is, you know, it's not quite as optimal from a hypertrophy perspective. I've been doing a little bit of CrossFit. I've been learning some of the Olympic lifts. I've been going on the odd run whilst we've been in lockdown um, alongside a few bodybuilding sessions over the week. So I'm still doing what I need to do to sustain my current physique to, to maintain the amount of muscle tissue that I have currently got. Don't get me wrong. I'm still doing some hypertrophy training over the week, but on top of that, I'm trying different styles of training and I do have a lot less structure. Um, and I'm not being so meticulous with tracking my lifts. Um, and that's appropriate for where I'm currently at because I'm not looking to maximally develop my physique anymore. I'm actually really happy with my body composition. And when you are looking to maintain rather than actually push for progress from a hypertrophy perspective, um, there is a lot more room for flexibility because the, the amount of volume over the week you have to do in regards to resistance training is a lot less if you just want to maintain the muscle tissue that you have got as opposed to actually continue to build muscle tissue. So that's why I can right now get away with doing a lot less hypertrophy training and my training doesn't have to be quite as optimal. Um, and I'm able to be, you know, a lot more flexible with the form of training that I'm doing. And I think that, um, People, well, people have told me that it's quite refreshing to see that I have been experimenting with different styles of training and I have been more relaxed with my approach. And I think it, it really has its place in um, if I had tied my identity to bodybuilding, I would have really struggled with the transition away from bodybuilding and I would have struggled to try any other styles of training and I would have struggled to share my journey with that because I would have felt like it wasn't me if I had tied my identity to the sport of bodybuilding. But because I always saw bodybuilding and competing as a part of my life rather than my whole entire life and my identity as a person, because I always knew that I was more, there's more to me as a, of a person, as a person 
than the sport I competing and there is more to me as a person than the style of training that I do because I always recognize that it I I still I've always been very confident in who I am and transitioning away from the sport has not been so difficult because I'm, I've always known that it's not my identity. It's just always been a part of my life. And I think that's one of the reasons it's so important to have an open mind and to never tie yourself and never view your identity as, for example, a bodybuilding competitor. Bodybuilding is a part of your life not your whole life and yes you are a competitor but you are also potentially someone's best friend someone's girlfriend you are loving you are caring you have so many other qualities away from your abilities as a competitor that contribute to who you are as a person and it's so so important to recognize that because like i said it just makes that transition away from the sport when that time comes so much easier It's also super important to recognize that there are many different benefits to training and hitting the fundamentals from a nutritional perspective far away from your body composition. Like, yes, your body composition will improve if you train hard and if you eat well, that, that is obviously a, a, a byproduct of doing so. However, there are other benefits away from that and not everybody trains just to improve their physique and their body composition and it's your body composition is such such a small part of fitness and it's so important to recognize that and not overlook the other benefits that there are to staying active to training um to looking after your health to eating lots of nutrient dense foods your health is your mental and physical health is so important and it's definitely not something that should be overlooked and not like i said not everybody trains just to change their body composition and there are so many other reasons for doing so like for example resistance training can help prevent things like osteoporosis when you get older which is just incredible and like i said earlier you know part of what training has been for me recently before lockdown obviously is an opportunity to be social as well being social in itself is good for your health your mental and physical health um being physically fit is another huge health benefit and it's something which is often overlooked by bodybuilders for example you know they they will do very minimal cardio in their off seasons and things like that so um another reason why if you value fitness then bodybuilding might not be an appropriate goal for you as an individual um so yeah there are so many other benefits to training it doesn't all just come down to your body composition and if for example one day you get to a point in your life where actually you don't really have any body composition related goals like myself right now i yes i want to maintain what i've got and i want to maintain good condition and i care about the way that i look aesthetically and um, but it's not my main priority and i don't actually care too much for manipulating my body composition at this moment in time i might again in the future but i don't right now but training still serves a very important purpose for me um, and like I said the mental and physical health benefits of staying consistent with my training are huge and it's actually such an important part of my life so yeah it's just really important not to see training or see your nutritional protocols as solely something which you utilize to manipulate your body composition because there is so much more to it than that um and for some people you know tra training is has never been something which they've utilized to manipulate their body composition which i know might sound crazy for some of you listening to this but for some people it's nothing to do with that and i think in the fitness industry there is often too much emphasis placed on training to improve your body composition and potentially not enough emphasis placed on the other benefits of training and the other benefits of eating nutrient dense foods and getting your protein in and all of that good stuff 
I think something else that's really important to point out is that it's really important not to get stuck training a certain way in fear of judgment from others. And it's really important to do what is right for you. Like you can't live your life doing things just to please other people. If you do, you will find yourself living a very miserable life and you'll always be thinking, what if? Like, what if I just did what I really actually wanted to do? And I think especially with social media now, people get stuck in comparing themselves to other people. People get caught up in things like likes and how many followers you have and wondering what those people might think of you if you do something a certain way. Um, and it's just, it's, it's just not a fulfilling way to live your life to, to use those things to dictate what you do. Like if something makes you happy, then do that. If you really want to try something in particular, then do that. Always educate yourself on, um, yes, what is optimal. However, sometimes what is optimal on paper might not be optimal for you as an individual. Like for example, the optimal protocols to maximally succeed with hypertrophy, yes, they might be optimal on paper, but they might not be what you need. Like if your goal is not to be a Miss or Mr. Olympia and you don't need to maximally develop muscle tissue, and yes, you wanna build some muscle tissue, but you don't wanna do it maximally, then being flexible with your protocols might have its place because if if being flexible with your protocols and following a slightly less optimal form of training means that you can actually sustain your efforts for an extended period of time and you can stay consistent and your efforts are consistent over time then that is going to reap much more reward over the long term in comparison to you trying to follow an optimal protocol for building muscle tissue or losing body fat but only lasting 10 weeks and then falling off and reverting back to your previous behaviors and therefore ending up back where you started and then having to try and go through that process again so sometimes like i said what's optimal on paper might not be optimal for you as an individual based on what you can actually sustain long-term and enjoyment comes into that massively. So like I said, if a slightly more, if a slightly less optimal form of training is more enjoyable for you and therefore you are able to sustain that over the long-term and you recognize the other benefits of training away from just your body composition, such as improving your fitness levels, improving your mental and physical health, being social during those training sessions, then that's great. Like as long as you recognize that it is slightly less optimal, then you roll with less optimal if it enables you to be more consistent over the long term because it will reap more reward eventually than trying to follow an optimal protocol but only lasting a very short period of time. So yeah, do what's right for you. And don't think that you have to either be optimal or do nothing either, because there is a huge middle ground spectrum in between those two things where it is absolutely okay to sit and where sometimes you'll have to sit just due to the nature of your life. Like if something else comes up, if you have to drop the kids off at school, for example, and therefore you miss a training session, then carry on. Don't see that as something which has stopped your progress because it hasn't. It's just a hurdle along the way which you have to push through and overcome. And imperfect effort is always better than no effort. And imperfect effort consistently over the long term is better than perfect effort for a very short period of time and then ending up back where you started. So these are just things to think about. And um, going back to the original question, what is fitness? Fitness for one person may well be different to what fitness is for another person. And like I said, I think in the fitness industry, there are loads of different sort of subcategories of fitness. 
and whichever subcategory you are in, it can be very easy to get caught up in thinking that that subcategory is the entirety of the fitness industry and that is the be all and end all when in reality it's okay to sort of like find different ways of um sustaining mental and physical health and of pursuing your whatever your fitness goals may be and it's okay for your fitness goals to change so don't just stick in one sort of subcategory because you're scared of what other people may think or because you feel like you should be following what's optimal for what you've done previously just be open-minded and don't be stuck in your ways so i will leave that there guys if you have any questions off the back of this please drop me a message on instagram i have like i said had quite a few replies people saying that they're actually really enjoying seeing me do the odd bit of crossfit like i said i am still bodybuilding like i am still hypertrophy training a few times over the week and i want to sustain the muscle mass that i'm currently carrying i still want to sustain good condition but um i'm just really enjoying being flexible with things so i'm glad that you guys are enjoying seeing that as well um, and I think part of the reason people have found it quite refreshing is because I have shared the process without fear of judgment from others and I have been very open with things and I've also shown that I'm a beginner at what I'm currently doing and um, it's okay to go from being advanced at one thing, for example bodybuilding in my case, to starting from the ground up with another thing crossfit in my case you know you there's no heart there's no shame in starting from the ground up with something and there's no shame in being a beginner at something even if you're an expert in another aspect of health and fitness so just some food for thought there and when it comes to nutrition as well that's another thing which may change over time as you progress and as you go through your fitness journey and Again, just because, I don't know, say you've tracked your macros for years, like I did, that doesn't mean that you have to do that forever. And in fact, I think that most people shouldn't track their macros forever. It serves its purpose 100% for a period of time. And you might go through phases of tracking and then transition away from tracking again. You might come back to it and revisit it at some point. Say if you have a fat loss goal for a certain event or something like that but there's no need to feel like you have to do one thing 24 7 and that applies to both nutrition and training and like i said if you if you have tracked for a long period of time there's no reason for you to feel like you have to do that forever and it actually i think it has its place to spend some time away from tracking and away from my fitness pal and there are huge benefits to doing so for those of you don't, who don't know, I literally don't track anything these days. Um, I do still like weigh my food out just to make sure that I'm having enough, like not all of my food, but things like oats and cereal. I sort of set myself a minimum. So I'll always have like at least 60 grams of those foods just to make sure I'm eating enough throughout the day. And I still hit the fundamentals. So I'll still have four servings of protein spread throughout the day every day just to hit the basics and make sure that I'm doing what I need to do to sustain my current quantity of muscle tissue that I'm carrying um, and also hit what I need to hit for for health and to progress with my performance in some ways um, so yeah I still have four servings of protein spread throughout the day I still get the majority of my calories from whole foods um, still eat plenty of fruit and veg do all of that good stuff but what not tracking enables me to do is have a little bit of mental freedom away from an app 24 7 and I mean when I work on my laptop and I'm on my phone all day the last thing I want to do is then spend more time on my phone on my fitness pal trying to track my food when in reality I don't need to do that um so there's that benefit as well and it enables me to include more variety in my diet like more adventurous food sources without having to mess around on my fitness pal and play macro jenga to try and make it fit my targets um, and there are health benefits to including plenty of variety in your diet so that's another benefit 
it also enables me to be social again without having to go onto my fitness pal and play macro jenga or worry about whether i'm hitting exact targets and it allows me to put into practice what i've learned via tracking over the years without having to rely on an app and it's refreshing and it shows you that you can still make great progress without having to be reliant upon an app which is obviously a really important skill to learn so that when the time comes when you want to transition away from tracking it's not so hard and that's something that you can you can almost prepare yourself for that point throughout the journey of tracking if that makes sense so as you are tracking on my fitness pal you can prepare yourself for the day that you decide you don't want to track whilst you are tracking every day and you can do that by doing things such as including plenty of variety in your diet even when you are tracking so that you get used to doing so and you don't feel like you have to eat certain foods in order to progress you can do things like make sure that you sit down to eat eat slowly chew your food properly eat mindfully to get used to being a little bit more in tune with your own physiological hunger cues rather than relying on an app to tell you what to eat um and all of that good stuff and you can even try so when you are tracking you can potentially try removing veg you can try having the odd day a week where you don't track all of that good stuff will sort of get you used to or it will make the transition away from tracking more easier when the time eventually comes um but like i said please let me know if you do have any questions off the back of any of this it has been a little bit of a ramble but i just kind of wanted to share my rambles with you today um so let me know if you did enjoy this have a wonderful rest of your day guys and i will speak to you later